Hey everybody, this is Lily, back with Lily. And I wanna show you something really important. I've talked about it a few times, but I haven't had the opportunity to demonstrate it and to, to show what I mean when I say that. So I'm gonna do her clipper work uh, for a show this weekend. And before I do, you see how there's a lot of this hard coat that's grown into the area or over the area that we're gonna clipper it or use the thinning shears. Um, and when I first started out, I thought I'd just, you know, I just cut that away. But what I realized is then that softens the coat and it makes the soft stuff, you know, from where we clipper start to get farther and farther to the side. And it starts, then it starts affecting the, dog, the view from this side. And especially if you're campaigning a dog, uh, maybe for owner handler, or you know, you, you got one out for a while as a special, or it's taking you some time to uh, you know, finish somebody, or you're trying to hold it for specialties, you name it. Anyway, the best thing you can do to prolong things, I'm gonna put a little ear powder in this to make it grippier. And before I do any clipper work back here, before I do any work with the thinners, I'm going to do some stripping. Now, how much you do kind of depends on the experience of your dog, how hard the coat is. This is not an area you're, you're trying to be perfect. This is just an area that you want to make sure there's always hard coat coming in, even if you're clippering or scissoring that area during your, your finishing touches. Uh, if the dog's really used to it, and the dog has a really easy to pull coat, you know, you can pull a little more, but you don't have to. Just, if, even if all you get is just a few, you know, a few hairs all the way up, that's better than nothing. And, you know, that's where you start making headway on a rotating coat for this area to start to just get really tight. Um, and it just grows out with short hair along this line and it's really easy to keep up and keep it looking nice. Just like we had to finger pluck the head for a while before we could get a nice head, it's a little like that with um, lightly plucking the pants before you do the clipper work. Now you can see how much I've already opened this up. None of that needed to be thin. Uh, pulling it was fine. Um, now one of the things that I, I want to mention is that the only time I strip this, uh, only time I cut or strip this area is when I'm getting ready for show on a show dog. If it's a pet, you don't need to spend the extra time and effort um, for yourself or for the dog to be that exacting. But for, for showing, ah, that hasn't happened yet. I lost my train of thought on the video, but I'm not gonna re-record re the video. I'm just gonna keep going. Um, so then when I'm gonna do the clipper work, I'm going to be using the right blade and, and what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna trim away the hair that's already soft there's a, there's a line here where some hair goes this way, some hair goes this way, and I make the first cut pretty much right on that line, unless I have a reason to not. Um, as you get to know a dog's conformation, just like on the neck, you might make some choices about where the line goes exactly in order to uh, create a little more of an effect of some kind, like, uh, helping your dog look a little wider in the back or helping your dog look not so wide in the back or you know whatever the thing you're trying to adjust for is. You're gonna be really careful on the clipper work here. And little on the tail. And, this, and I stripped the sides of the tail really good already. So that, uh, just like for down here, so that um, it doesn't get soft, starting to creep up the sides of your tail. 
Okay, I remembered what I was going to say before. <laughs> Good. So, the only time I mess with this hair is when I'm prepping for show. And same thing on the throat. Now, sometimes people just tighten this up with the thinning shears to make it look good at home. But if you're still showing your dog or you're trying to um, campaign your dog, like I said, you want this to last. And so what you need to do is let it grow out and be kind of, um, you know, less good looking like she was when we started. And that's just part of the price of showing. Uh, same thing, sometimes people say that about where the, the beard should be trimmed. They want it to look a certain way because they like to see it better, but they like to see it that way better. But then they wonder why they're not getting um, pointed to by the judge. And it's often because the beard is doing something the way it's cut, the way the lines are, that it's accentuating a negative that's not there, or it's... Um, hiding, a positive is there. So there's there's reasons to do it while you're showing that might be different once you retire the dog. Anyway, now that I've done some of the basic clipper work and I pulled the layer, I'm gonna start to use the thinning shears here. To tidy this line up a little bit. It helps me know where I need to go back with the clippers. Maybe gives me a chance to pull a little bit more hair again. Yeah. So now there's, because I use the thinning shears, there's a few stray hairs that are sticking out that are longer. So I can make another, you know, just really quick pass. Pull a little bit more hair. Okay. Now she's got a nice hard coat and it's, it's wrapping around a lot. So I can see from this side, from this side here, but I'm looking this way. I don't want to cut in too much right in this area because it's going to make the thigh look a little thin. So with that in mind, I'm, I'm going to be more conservative about where I put this line right here and how, uh, how flush. Normally I make this area pretty flush, but you got to look at it from the other side too before you commit yourself too far on, uh, on what your trimming is. Sometimes you can make it look really good as long as the judge is only looking from that direction. And then if they look another way, it looks like your dog has a pretty serious fault. I've certainly had done that enough times while I was learning how to not do that. Okay. Now I want the tail uh, to the top of the tail is a little longer than the front of the tail. That tends to make the tail look like it's more vertical than it is. So I definitely don't want to leave that hair there to give an impression of a fault that this dog doesn't have. So I'm going to trim that back. And then this is another place where you can, the tail is another place where you can put lines at a certain angle that help to to show the rear in a certain way that you, you know, you trained your eye for, you're trying to sculpt into your dog. Off this side. Just about done. Yeah. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with where the clipper line was here. I do need to Tune it up a little bit higher up, and that will help me to know if I need to go wider. Now, dogs can be pretty touchy back in this area, and she acts like she might be starting to come into season a little bit, so I'm going to make sure to have a pretty firm grip and stretch the skin, and then she won't twitch as much. She's still going to twitch, but if you're ready for it and you can find some ways to help make it less then you don't need to be as concerned about having an accident with the clippers. So holding the tail and pulling the skin up just a little is another way to help them be a little less touchy. Of course, I'm going to have to 
of learned that having their tail held is okay too. Stretch the skin. And now basically I am just trying to trim away the soft, the soft stuff because that's where I've you know clippered this line before enough times that it's soft. So since I was deliberate about that when I trimmed clippered her rear in the past, I can kind of use it as a guide now to help me do it without having to completely re eyeball it every time. Great. Last little bit is trimming here, trimming here where the hair is still long. Again, I come over to this side over here, look at it this way. And this bit of hair right here that I was thinking about trimming back when looking at it from the rear really does a nice thing for the curve of her, of her um, thigh from the side. So I'm actually not going to cut it any further or maybe if some part of it's sticking out just a tiny bit, but I'll probably just comb that, maybe hit it with a little spray. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. On one side, I, because I'm right-handed, I tend to go up on one side and down on the other side. That's just whatever works for you. All right, this is still a bit of a rough draft. It was in a pretty rough shape when, shape when I started. So I'm gonna leave it at this, and then uh, tomorrow, it, after she sleeps on it, it'll have time to get a more natural state, and that'll let me know if I need to uh, use the thinners to blend again. Um, I don't have my regular thinning shears here at the grooming shop, actually, because they're at the show site. So I'm using a little bit of a coarser thinner here, so I'm not getting quite as nice a tight finish as I would like, but uh, we'll have plenty of time over this week to tighten that up more. But um, that's, how you, that's how you put a rear on a dog, on a schnauzer, a standard schnauzer. Mm -hmm.